Hey again guys, and welcome back. Um, when I did my video on this uh, 50 watt resistor, a few of you had some questions, so I figured I'd just address them all at once. So one of the questions was, what would the resistance be uh, when it's cold and when it's hot? The resistance does change with temperature. Typically, resistance will go up a bit. So let's see, um, this is 3 ohms. My multimeter is not great down at that range, but we can definitely see if we can find a difference between the... Wow, look at that, 3.0. Oh, yeah, pretty much there, so you can see. There we go, 3 ohms. Okay, well that's not bad. Alright, so let's get this taped up with a temperature probe and we'll run it up to temperature probably I'll go a little bit further maybe I'll go 150 this time and we'll see if the the resistance changes quite a bit now if it changes like 5% it'll barely be perceptible I don't know if my my meter will be precise enough to catch it but if it changes by you know a whole ohm that's like 30% There we go. And I understand this capped on tape will make it so it's a little bit insulated, but yeah, it is what it is. Let me get the battery over here and I'll bring you back. Okay, so our starting temperature is 18 degrees C. I'll use the unity meter here to test the current. And then we'll uh, quickly unplug it and check on the ohms range here so ready oh no that's off camera ready and go so nearly four amps through it 18 C 19 C there we go it's climbing it's gonna take a little bit for the aluminum to saturate here so when the aluminum gets to hundred degrees um, th that's pretty much, you know, the, uh, the resistor inside will be far hotter than that. Let's see if I can get this to a place where I can just leave it. Oh, disconnected. Okay, 3.84. We're running up. 60. Should I go to 100? Maybe I'll go to 150. A lot of people were saying the max operating temperature was a lot higher than I was expecting. So we'll see. It's definitely climbing. Voltage might be sagging on this uh, on this battery too. I don't know what the state of charge is. It's above 12, that's for sure, but that doesn't mean much. Lead acid battery is pretty much dead at uh, 12 volts. Okay, it's starting to get stinky. Maybe I should insulate it from my mat. Oh well. Nearly 120 degrees science. Oh, it's starting to stink. It's starting to smell like, I don't know, a hair dryer you haven't used in a couple of years and then turn on for the first time. 140. It smells like the first time you turn your furnace on after a hot summer. Okay, I'm getting ready. 150. Pulling it and checking the resistance. Oh my god, it went down. One ohm of resistance. 1.3 resistance went down. Well, that's interesting. I don't even know what to make of that. That's not a very good resistor if it just keeps dropping with temperature. And look at that. It's cooling down. It must be cooling down. This is up to a whopping 160. Oh man, I'm starting to melt my bench. 
So 160, and now it's recovering, I guess, as the aluminum takes all the heat out. Oh man, scorched my bench on that one. I didn't think it was going to get that hot. 2.4, still coming down. Maybe I'll plop it on top of this roll of solder. There we go. I don't care if it melts the plastic on the solder roll. 150, it's down to 2.5 ohms, or up to 2.5 ohms, I should say. Huh. That is uh, that is ridiculous. It went. It was down at like one ohm, which could easily be lead resistance. However, the the current on the unity meter didn't climb. I didn't see a climb. I guess most of the resistance was coming from the the leads here, the the crock clip connections. Well, that's pretty cool. I wonder if I'm gonna have to get a beefier battery and actual bolted terminals to do this properly. So the aluminum now is at 127 and we're almost back to our 3 ohms of resistance. One twenty four. We're gonna go all the way until this is three ohms. One twenty. One twenty. Didn't click over to three ohms yet. So those of you who said it was uh, meant to be run a lot hotter, I'm starting to doubt that severely because what's the point of a three ohm resistor that heats up to be one ohm? That's clearly not in its operating range. This is probably the same relative rules as uh, silicone components where 100 degrees is the safe operating range. Drops to 109. Just change ranges here just to see. No, oh, still 2.9. I bet you it's about 100 C where I pulled it last time that it's going to be about 3 ohms. It's having a hard time shedding that heat. Now we're below 100 now, still at 2.9. That's really interesting. Stuff like um, light bulbs and stuff usually drop resistance when uh, they warm up. But I guess these resistors, um, or sorry, uh, increase resistance. But these resistors seem to go the other direction. 90. I mean, 2.9 is close enough, but it'd be nice to see where it stops being 3 ohms. Still not. Oh. So about, let's say 90 degrees, it stops being 3 ohms. Interesting. I think I'm going to try another test. So that last test was actually asked for by a YouTuber called Another Maker. Uh, this test here that I'm about to do has been requested by Junk From Work. He asked if, uh, if I could put this in a water bath. So I got my scale here so you scientitious types can do the math. Four hundred and four grams of water, distilled water from Walmart, only the best stuff. Okay, same deal here. The Resistor is still hot from the last test, so jamming it in there should cool it down and get us to a nice stable point. It's 
There we go. Put this guy in there. Drop that into the water. And this shouldn't conduct, but uh, then again, should not conduct. And let's go. So now this, oh, I already see bubbles. I don't know if that's just from the insulation, but uh, either way, this is climbing in temperature, but not nearly as quickly. We can check our current. Zero that out. Same thing, nearly four amps. So we are running the same current. We're not shorting anything. But this is, uh, like I expected, heating up much slower. In fact, I thought it was going to be even slower than that. Let me, uh, I'll let this go for a little bit and I'll bring you back after. It seems at this point, less than five minutes in, the uh, the resistor is having a hard time heating up the water. So, yeah, maybe with a good heatsink, this uh, resistor would be able to handle the 50 watts. But I mean, you have to also remember that it's advertised as is as a 50 watt resistor on the eBay listings. So me included, but but. People who are shopping on eBay don't actually know that this requires an additional heatsink. I mean, clearly I didn't, and I shop on eBay all the time. So if you're buying these things expecting it to handle 50 watts just by itself, uh, you're dreaming. But if, uh, yeah, if there's a data sheet available that tells you that you need to put it on a heatsink, then maybe I would agree with that, because it seems to be coming real close to the 50 watts right now, and it's holding relatively steady just at 40 degrees Celsius this water is still cool to the touch so I would say this has another couple hours before it heats up the water so it gets up to a, a reasonable temperature but it'll never hit over 100 degrees C considering the water will start phase changing at that point and your resistor will be cooled so if you need to do a long-term test for sure 400 grams of water is definitely adequate but if you think this thing can do open air at 50 watts you're dreaming so yeah just a quick little uh, recap video and answering your questions if you have more questions about these resistors put them in the comments below and thanks again for watching